So I want to start by saying that I'm a great diversity candidate, but not for the reasons that people think. And this story kind of illustrates that. So how Python changed my life. It's kind of a bigger story than that. It's kind of how code changed my life, how this entire journey has changed my life. So I realized the other day when I was talking to one of my friends, uh, when I was in the fifth grade, I actually won an essay competition that involved science and ended up at the Science Museum in San Francisco. And I had com literally completely forgotten about all about that because that's how discouraged I was from math and science, even though that was something that really interested me. So like a lot of other girls, I was interested in worms and bugs and dirt, but you know, that's not a girl thing. So I don't like pink. Okay, <laughs> it's one of those things. But girls are definitely set on a very clear path. Um, I really enjoyed my computer class in junior high school, but I was strongly discouraged from taking it again and taking the art class even though I didn't want to. This is the kind of stuff that bothers me and this is the reason that I wanna do talks like this is because when I start talking to other women in my age group who are also moving into the tech field, they have very similar stories. Well, I liked this, and I was interested in that, but I was told that you know I wasn't good at that. So I was told for a long time I wasn't good at math, for example. Turns out, you actually don't have to be good at math to do code, yay! <laughs> so I'm smart, I like to read, I'm interested in a lot of different subjects, but I spent a long time working retail, I spent seven years working in corporate. I worked in call centers. I was an account rep. Um, I hated my job, so I left and I ended up becoming a pastry chef. And I worked as a grill cook. I worked as a sous chef. I worked as a pantry cook and an event chef. And it's terrible. It's hard work. It's long hours. By the way, when you buy a pack of cigarettes and you start smoking again after quitting, <laughs> You have to quit your job. <laughs> and the reason you have to quit your job is because you realize that you're probably going to die really, really young from the stress, from the injuries, from the cigarettes, from the people around you doing drugs that you might rip off an arm and just like beat them to death with it. Um, <laughs> like this is a real thing. And so I um, ended up moving to front of house because that's what I was encouraged to do because I'm good with people. Didn't really love that either. So I got hurt. And when you are injured in food service, you're done. That's it. It's the end of the world. I popped a tendon. I was barely able to walk, started having migraines. I got fired from my job because I got injured on the job and they never reported it. They could just fire me. Yay, food service. The great part about this part of the story, though, I became an artist. I had always wanted to learn to draw. All of my friends were artists. They were painters. They could all draw so beautifully, and I always wanted to learn to do all of that stuff. So I taught myself to knit. I wasn't very good at it, so I taught myself to crochet. Turns out I love that. And then I actually really took on painting. I actually have some paintings in a gallery in Corvallis right now because I have experimented, and I have worked with it, and I have changed, and I have grown. And I believe with my full soul that I would not be able to do the things that I do with code if I hadn't been injured and become an artist. Because what becoming an artist taught me is that all of those years that people told me that I wasn't going to be able to do any of the things I wanted to do, well, you're not very good at drawing. You're not very good at math. It turns out, by the way, you're good at math when you figure out what kind of math you're good at. And the kind of math that I'm good at is food math. If you want me to figure out a recipe without actually uh, using a calculator, I can do that. I can make 500 mini cakes in two days by myself and scale that recipe. That's math. <laughs> and it's the same with art. You can't draw at the beginning. That's absolutely true. I can draw faces now, though. And they're really beautiful. I'm really proud of my work. But it took time, and it took effort, and it took practice. Well, the reason I got into programming was once I learned that I was good at art, I had a friend who went to a boot camp, 
and he is not necessarily the smartest person that I know. And I expressed that I was interested in going to a boot camp. And my then boyfriend essentially patted me on the head and called me pretty by telling me that I was the smartest person that he knew and he didn't think I was smart enough to learn to code. Two years later, I'm single and I know how to code. <laughs> so it didn't take me two years to break up with him, by the way. That was just a few months later. <laughs> that, that part ended. Um, Last summer, I actually started learning how to code on Codecademy. And um, there are some really frustrating parts about that if anybody's using Codecademy for the first time. By the way, there are some things that are broken and they don't care. So some of your answers are actually right. They know they're right. And they know that you're just not gonna pass that particular portion of your course. And they don't care, because if you go in and look at the forums, like 500 other people are like, you know this is broken, right? and there's crickets. <laughs> so I went to a boot camp just before turning 40. Um, it was one of those things, like I hadn't been coding and I kept thinking about it. I was like, ooh, what about all the cool things I could build? What should I be learning next? But I didn't have the time and I didn't have the energy. I contacted a boot camp and the next thing I knew, essentially, there I was. Full immersion boot camp. I was so bottom level that I was teaching myself how to do command line in the second week. So I want you to really understand like how big this really is. But now I know what I'm capable of. I'm capable of a lot more than what I realized. It's so exciting to do code. And um, there is a horrible rumor going around, and Thursday didn't want me to say this. There's a horrible rumor going around that I hate Python and I know who started it, and I have talked to this person repeatedly that that is not accurate. Um, I did struggle with Python, but I built an entire app in Python and Django. So it's not the most horrifying language in the world, and I... <laughs> okay, look, I said that during my boot camp, but I wanna be clear, I was in a room with like six guys for three months. There were days when I just wanted to cry. <laughs> There were days when I wanted to run out screaming just from the horror of being around them. <laughs> but I didn't. I stayed. Six weeks in, I had built an app, and I actually was demonstrating it to the president of PSU, even though I didn't know who that's who it was. So I had enough knowledge after six weeks to build an app and present it with intelligence. So Python is not the most horrifying language in the world, despite the fact that you might run into someone who will tell you that that's what I said, I did, it was in anger, and I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so this is my app, actually. So one of the things I'm gonna tell you is that um, I'm one of those people, I'm a hard worker, I'm always working, I frequently work two jobs. One of the jobs I was working, I was working with a, an elderly lady who has dementia, and there are times, she also has cerebral palsy, and she's 80, so sometimes communication is really, really difficult. Imagine talking to somebody who at any point in time can be 5, 15, 25, 40, 82, or possibly it goes like that, and that's, that's one day. That could be three hours. They are springing back and forth like that. Dialogue is really, really difficult. When I started all of this, I really honestly just wanted to build games. It was all I cared about. I wanted to build a game that taught people about dementia until I realized my issue was that I can't communicate with her sometimes because she's jumping around in an age spectrum that I don't necessarily understand. I'm 40, I communicate most of the time as though I am 40. So I'm not jumping around in such a huge spectrum. And then I realized other people were having the same issue. Other people ha are caregivers or their children, they're dealing with people who have dementia. And so I created an app that you can actually go into, you click on one of the buttons and it pops open and it gives you an actual dialogue. Because when you Google this, it mostly tells you, you can't say that. You can't say that. Oh, definitely don't say that. So you're left with, well, what do I say in this moment when this person is afraid or she's angry or 
she's ready to throw things or she's threatening to hit me. What do I say? I created an app to tell you it's not perfect, it's not exact, but this is the power of the internet. We have the power to create things to help people and solve their problems. Heidi actually spoke to this yesterday. This is the point, this is why we're here. We're here to learn these skills and find a problem and then solve it. All our solutions aren't gonna be perfect, but what a beginning. This is so exciting to me and this is what Python did. I struggled through Django because Django sometimes is really painful and I do actually like Flask better, just for the record. Um, <laughs> But this is what Python did for me. It changed my entire mindset. I went from just saying, oh, I can just build games and it'll be magical, to, oh wait, I can build apps about anxiety. I can build apps to help people who want to commit suicide. I can build forums that allow caregivers to have conversations with each other so that they can help each other through these stressful times, get better dialogue going, feel less burned out, feel less isolated. I have chills right now just even thinking about what my life was like two years ago. Because two years ago, I had just gone through a terrible breakup from somebody who didn't even think I was smart enough to do any of this. And because of Python, because of coding, I have the most amazing friends. My entire life is so much richer. It's it's golden, and I think that we look at code sometimes, and especially the women, and I, I love all of you. I'm so excited whenever I see women. I'm like, yay, women. <laughs> I spend so much time with men. Yay, women. <laughs> um, I've, I've met these women that are my age or older, and they feel afraid. They feel like they can't do this. They feel like this is... It's too much, it's too hard, it's too scary. I was learning command line in my second week in a room full of guys who had been coding since junior high school because I was also the oldest student. And it, I could have just given up. There was actually another woman in my class who gave up after the first week. And I could have given up, but why would I do that when this is my potential? Actually, this isn't my potential, I have greater potential than this and that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> Um, okay, I was flowing really well there, sorry. <laughs> um, one of my teachers was actually a little bit worried about me during class because he felt like I'm one of those people that just like learns something and bounces to something new. And one of the things that people tend to think about me is that I've spent 20 years just sort of filled with wasted potential, just flitting from thing to thing and doing nothing. And I'll tell you this, it's taken me 20 years to eliminate things that I like, but I don't necessarily love. Because you don't wanna just spend the rest of your life doing things you like, but don't necessarily love. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter how old you are. If this is the first time that you're ever learning how to code, come talk to me. Go talk to Thursday. Talk to Ariel. Talk to the other Ariel. Talk to Thursday. We're here for you because we want you to be a part of this. We understand where you're at. We understand that it's hard. We understand that it's frightening and horrifying and that it makes you want to run away screaming. But for God's sake, don't give up. Please don't give up because we want you here. We want to create things together. Um, a, a group of my friends and I, we, we have different ideas and we support each other. And that's how we're doing this. That's how we're getting through it. I don't think being 40, I've actually been asked that. People are like, well, oh my God, but you're 40. It's like, what does that mean? I don't understand what that means. <laughs> if I could be 27 and become a pastry chef, I don't see why I can't become a programmer at 40. That is not even remotely a worry for me. And don't let other people, if you don't like, seriously, if you don't take away anything else from this, don't listen to what other people tell you about yourself because they don't know. They don't know who you are inside. They don't know what you're thinking. They don't know what makes your heart beat so fast 
that you can barely breathe when you think about what it is you want to do with excitement. They can tell you who they are. Someone told me that the other day. People can tell you who they are, but they can't tell you who you are. And that's so important. What if when my ex-boyfriend told me that I couldn't learn how to code, I had just said, okay, I'd still be working a terrible retail job. I'd probably still be living in Oakland. I wouldn't have been brave enough to move to Portland, start my life over, spend six months without friends, go to a boot camp. It's not bravery. It's the fear that someday those won't be options anymore. There's a big difference. So you can choose to look at it as bravery and think, I'm not brave enough to do that. Or you could realize you can just spend the rest of your life doing nothing. Look around the people that you know. There, there are people who want to do things every day, and they don't because they're afraid. They're afraid of what other people think. They're afraid of what other people are going to say about them. Who cares? If you don't like me, you never have to see me again. And I really mean that. I don't care. <laughs> um, so now's a good time. If you have any questions for me, I would be happy to answer them. Um, I think the, the thing for me was mentoring, and that's one of the things I've noticed. Um, I'm actually part of um, Women Who Code and um, the Women of Color in Tech, and I'll tell you the major difference between the two is the Women of Color in Tech, they have talked about they don't have mentors. So men, mentor women. If you find a woman that you feel like you have a connection to and that you can work with and that she can work comfortably with you, help her. And don't, I don't mean stand over her and tell her what to do. I mean, help her, listen to her. She's going to tell you what she needs. Give her that. We all need that. That's, that's a human thing. That's not necessarily a man woman thing. Um, I will say that as a woman, um, one of the unfortunate things that happened to me at the very beginning was I got snubbed by other women in tech, and that was very hurtful and unpleasant. That has, um, that has not made, been true. From That was true at the very beginning. It, it hasn't stayed true. But having a mentor has made such a difference. I can go to her with anything. Um, if somebody says something to me that I don't understand, instead of just standing around feeling stupid, which I think is one of the biggest problems, I can actually go to Paige and I can say, okay, well, he said this thing and it totally made no sense to me, but he was talking about X, Y, and Z. And she just sits down and explains it to me. And if I don't understand her, she finds a different way to explain it. So I think just being open and remembering how to talk to people, talk to people with the kind of kindness and compassion that you would want for yourself. And I think that's so valuable. <laughs> okay, I actually love this question. <laughs> how do you work with dudes without murdering them? <laughs> um, in the three months that I was in my coding class. Um, for the most part, they didn't bother me, but uh, there was one that literally, like, I think the last day he said that I was filled with hate and I was like, just for you. And <laughs> in, in, I mean, it took me, it didn't take me three months to be driven crazy by him, but it took me three months to just finally be like, I'm just gonna break down and actually kill you. Um, <laughs> But I'm going to tell you the secret that people don't really want to necessarily acknowledge. 
Are you ready? Dudes are people. <laughs> I know. It's shocking. Um, some of my favorite people are men. And um, one of some of my closest friends are men. When they are not communicating with me in a way that I feel like is clear or respectful, I say that. I say, wow, did you mean to say it like that? And sometimes they don't respond well to that. But really, like, no, wow, did you mean to say it like that? You came across as really condescending, and I really didn't appreciate that. The dudes that you work with who care will definitely circle back and realize that that was not how they intended to come across. Um, I think that men are great. I happen to love them personally. I had a dad, and I have a brother. I think they're amazing. <laughs> um, but I think that we also need to have a different conversation in the respect that um, I think men need more room in general in the human world to be vulnerable and open creatures. We don't necessarily give them that. And as a woman, the one thing I will say is, let's stop telling them things like man up, because that's not helping. So. Just <laughs> Okay, uh, what do you think the solution is to the problem of women and minorities in schools being discouraged from approaching careers in math and tech? Come see me later, because I only have four minutes. And I will not be able to answer that question in four minutes, because I feel really, 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 really passionately about this. This is a serious issue, it's not a joke, and anybody who wants to talk to me about diversity, Anytime, I'm happy to talk about it because I don't think we're having the right conversations around it. And I say that as someone whose mother is white and whose father is black and I have a weird name. And there are so many reasons that diversity and minorities, there's issues across the board and we need to be having the correct conversation and asking the right questions. And this was definitely one of them and I'm keeping this card. <laughs> um, how can I be strong enough to not give up when no one believes in me? How to find a mentor? Um, you should believe in yourself. That's number one. That's the most important thing. And I know that that's not easy. Um, I say that as someone who suffers from anxiety. I was not at all kidding when I said I want to build apps around that. Um, but seriously, I'm LunaRaven13 on Twitter. Um, actually, if you just Google LunaRaven13, you'll pretty much find me everywhere. I'm on like Pinterest, and I'm on Facebook, and I'm a total weirdo. Anyway, um, come find me. Come talk to me. I know a lot of people. If I know somebody that I think can mentor you, I will point you in the right direction. Um, I'm also the co-organizer for Women's JavaScript Night over at Code Guild. So please, come on over. We would love to have you. Any one of us um, is happy to help you. We understand what it's like when you're having those moments and you just, I mean, there were days I wanted to give up. But I'll tell you what, in the three months of my boot camp, I was the only person who did not miss one single day. I was also the only person who worked their way through the class. And I want to stress that. I was in a classroom filled with white guys who had privilege, who didn't have to work their way through. I had to. I didn't have any money. I wouldn't have any money now if I hadn't done that. And that's not to slam them. But you know what? I wasn't even really allowed to talk about certain things because, you know, we don't want to rock the boat. But the truth of the matter is, if you know that you are meant to be doing something, do it, period. End of conversation. I give up on things that don't interest me anymore. I have days where I don't believe in myself. Um, I am also a very strong uh, proponent of if you need help and you're feeling like things are really, really bad, call me. I've lost several people that I love very deeply to suicide and honest to God, Call me at 3 a.m. if you have to. I really honestly don't care because I would rather you reached out and said, I need help, I'm feeling anxious, I don't believe in myself, I feel completely lost, than to do something stupid that would be really harmful to the people in your life because they care, you matter, you're important, they love you, I love you, I don't even know you and I love you. <laughs> and I really sincerely mean that. So, um, being strong isn't something we have to be every day, and I think that's another thing. As women, we feel like we have to do everything. You know, we have to be the mom, and we have to be the wife, and we have to work full time, and then we have to volunteer for everything, and we have to do all of the talks, and we have to do all of the things, and we have to be all of the blah, 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 blah. No, stop. You don't. It's fine. You know why? 
because the things will still get done. Somebody is going to be there to help you if you just say, hey, I need help. So women need opportunity to be vulnerable too because I don't think that any human at this point in time is currently honestly afforded the ability to be vulnerable. Doing something like this is terrifying. There, I had The other day, I was trying to uh, spin up a Ruby app on Heroku and I couldn't make things work on my Windows machine. I honestly was like, I am the stupidest person alive. And my friend was like, I was looking at what you were doing on my Mac, because yeah, I tried it on a Mac too. And she's like, and the VPN was just fighting you. Huh. Okay, so I'm not actually the stupidest person alive? She was like, no, you're definitely not the stupidest person alive. <laughs> and these are the people you need to surround yourself with. If there are people in your life who are telling you you can't do it, I'm going to tell you what you should do to them. Amputate them. <laughs> because you don't need that kind of crap in your life. Get rid of them. Nobody should be telling you that you can't do something. If they're there, just be like, Bye, Felicia. Don't let the door hit ya. And with that, peace them out. <laughs>